welcome biologists to this video where we're going to be discussing DNA sequencing in part one and in the second video electrophoresis. So the sequencing DNA has improved over history and throughout time and this is because of the development of good and better sequencing techniques. Now we're going to look at the basic Sanger technique which you do need to be aware of but then we're going to quickly highlight over some of the more improved techniques. But as you can see over time we have improved the sequencing of DNA from going from 500 to 800 base pairs to then 1.8 million by looking at bacteria and then C. elegans which is a basic worm and then all the way up to our whole genome, the Human Genome Project. Now, the whole purpose of sequencing DNA is so that you can then store that sequence on a database and allow quick comparisons between members of the same species or different species. It also allows you to see if there's any links between any genetic diseases. You can also use it to predict any amino acid sequences or protein structures. And you could also do genetic profiling, which we'll look at a little bit later on. So the main technique you need to be aware of here with sequencing is the Sanger or chain terminator technique. Uh, anything in a red box here is taken direct, directly from the MART schemes and you do need to be aware of it. So the first thing we need to do is extract the DNA that we're going to be looking at. We then need to cut it into fragments of various lengths and amplify those lengths using PCR. And you'll look at what PCR is later on. So now I have my DNA that's been cut into various fragments and I've amplified it, so I've got many, many copies of these different fragments. What I'll then do is pour them into these four different solutions to start the sequencing technique. Now, in each of these four solutions here, I have three DNA nucleotides, which are going to be added onto my exposed bases here. I'm going to have DNA polymerase, which forms the sugar phosphate backbone between my, my new DNA strand. And I'm also going to have primers, and primers are a sh very short sequence of DNA which help the DNA polymerase to attach on to my strands, allowing my sugar phosphate backbone to be formed between my new DNA nucleotides. Now, in each of these solutions, I have what's known as a terminator base, and in each each solution here have a different terminator B so base. So in this one, I have a terminator base C. In this one, I have a terminator base G, so on and so forth. And what this does, the terminator base, is it stops DNA polymerase from adding on any more nucleotides. So anywhere in this solution here where I was to put a C on, that C could be from a normal DNA nucleotide, but it could also be from a terminator base. So as a result, in this solution here, I'm going to get various different lengths of DNA that end in C. And then so on and so forth for the other ones. I'll show you a picture on the next slide to show you a bit more details what happens in G, for example. Now, once I've got these different strands and different lengths of DNAs based upon these terminator bases that have kicked off my DNA polymerase, um, I will then add them onto an electrophoresis plate, which separates out my DNA based upon mass. And then you can read the sequence of DNA, which can then be stored to allow quick comparisons. So this is an example of what's going on here in my terminator base G. So if this is the strand that is exposed on my DNA. My yellow bit here is the primer. So my primer would attach to the DNA, allowing my DNA polymerase to then bind and add on my free DNA nucleotides. But as you can see here, wherever I get to a C, I'm going to have a G that joins on. Now this G could be a terminator base, like what's happened here, this purple one. So therefore I resulted in a quite short chain. Or it could be a normal DNA nucleotide and the process would continue till I got to another G and that could then be a terminator base. But it could also not be a terminator and it could be a normal DNA nucleotide and the process would continue. And as you can see here, I've got various lengths of my DNA due to my terminator base kicking off my DNA polymerase. So therefore I cannot extend my DNA chain any further. Um, as a result of this, I'm going to get various different lengths of DNA, as you can see here, which you would then put onto a plate for electrophoresis. Um, and then you can read off the plate and electrophoresis, which we'll look at in the next slide. There are faster techniques for DNA sequencing, which include these ones here. But the main thing you need to know is that it's massive parallel sequencing. You can sequence many DNA at the same time. 